a demonstration of the Q-Lab Q-Sun XE3HC Xeon Light Stability Weathering Tester. <clears throat> it simulates and accelerates various condition, provides the best match to the full spectrum of sunlight. Controlled humidity for realistic moisture simulation. Automatic and can be operated 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. It is equipped with a radiometer. The specimen tray is 17 and a half inches long by 28 inches wide. It is also equipped with a separate cooling unit and it's, and it's simultaneously chamber air and black panel temperature control is possible. It is powered by 208 three phase uh, requiring a 44 amp service. First, we'll take a walk around it. We'll start by turning the switch on here. Now, when it first comes up, it'll normally stop at this first screen here, as you can see. Now, we'll step around the back. Just before we start operating it, I'd like to show you that here is where your water supply would be and a water drain as well. Um, for purposes of our demonstration, we are using a charge bottle here. If we step around the other side, all the way around the back again, this is basically an air conditioning unit. What I just want to show you it's completely removable and it lines up just like that. You bolt this duct on when you get it and uh, simply put this in place. It is controlled also by the main unit as well. This is our main power coming in. This is our auxiliary power and this is the power going to our cooling unit. This is the inside chamber where you'd have your tray and you can put your specimen. This is the black panel temperature probe. The uh, black coating on it allows it to uniformly absorb all um, wavelengths coming down in the chamber. This is normally kept closed and locked, but this is where the Xeon light power supplies are kept in here. Normally there's no servicing involved in this. It's a very, very clean unit. It is also interlocked as well, so if you open it, it shuts everything down. Also on the bottom here, This is a filter that periodically should be cleaned. Uh, we're leaving you with a clean filter. This would also be where the water would come in through the back into a float control here. So that as long as there's uh, between 70 and 90 PSI of water pressure, it'll keep the system filled. If it does run out of water, it'll give you an alarm up top. Now, the service manual is very complete on how to run the equipment. Uh, one of the things that I find handy is after reading some of the descriptions of the programming, they provide you with this really nice laminated uh, programming chart. All you need to do is do this a few times and uh, you should be able to do it. Uh, it's not that hard at all. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run a program today. Um, I'm going to select my program to run and I have written a program called F, I call it the multi-test program. 
So to select that, I'm going to hit enter. And what that will do is it will set the relative humidity to 50%, the black panel temperature in the back, or the tray uh, temperature where your specimens would be on, will be set at 70 degrees C, and the actual surrounding air temperature will be at 47. Now, I have the option at this point now of either having uh, the Xeon light source come on or having it completely dark, which would be the difference between weathering between, let's say, bright sunlight during the day and um, when it's at night and it's very dark. So I'm going to start by running the system by turning both the humidity on, adjusting the temperature, and turning on the Xeon lights. Now, normally when you start, you hit run. The first thing that will appear is this message here. This is not actually a, an error, but it has a timed startup period where it runs the cooling, blade, uh, a cooling blower to try to unify the uh, temperature inside. Now, as you can see here, our Xeon lights have gone on. Our set points are 0.55 uh, watts. This is our set point for our temperature, our chamber air, and our relative humidity. You can't open the door to see the light because the interlock will go off. But if you step around the back here and take a look up through the grate, you can see that the blazing Xeon lights are definitely on inside. Always avoid looking at any kind of uh, light uh, used in this capacity, especially ultraviolet. Now, if we go to our timer here, this was a test that I ran yesterday and I set it for one hour. Um, so what I think we'll do is we're gonna let this one run for a little bit and uh, come back in an hour and uh, we'll flip to some other steps where it'll turn the lights on, turn the lights off, and you'll see the variance in the temperature. Okay, I'm gonna run a different version of the same test. Uh, what I'm gonna do here is I will just go back into it and show you folks. Um, I'm going to go in there. And as you can see, I've changed this. Here are different operating modes. We can operate in light. Uh, there is a water spray um, option that's available. And I'm just going to run the same numbers. Hold on, I lost it. There. I'm still, I'm gonna run this way up, uh, keep this at 38, but I'm gonna do it in the dark. So I will enter, enter, accept those changes. And here we go. Again, it's, it's approximately 30 to 45 second delay while it runs through its system checks. Now, notice, come on over here for a second. Uh, now that we're in this mode, the cooling unit went on automatically. It will start and stop. All you have to do is keep this in the on position and it'll run from there. We look at up our panel here, it's now uh, zero since we don't have the lamps on anymore. And uh, we will come back in a little bit and see how we do. Back now, and uh, as you can see with the light off, it comes up very, very quickly. Uh, we have humidity of 93, we have a temperature of 37, our set point was 38, our set point was 95. Uh, also, for your knowledge, 
don't be concerned if you see steam coming out of the top of the equipment. This right here is a vent. If you feel over here, this is a vent. And when you really push up the uh, humidity set point, you'll see steam come out of here. That's naturally what it's supposed to do. So when the piece of equipment is on your, at your facility, uh, you might want to consider some kind of duct if you don't want the uh, condensation actually to uh, pile up in your room. So it's very simple to fo follow. Make sure you follow the programming chart and if you need descriptions of any one of the different modes, they're clearly written in the book. One thing that I posted while we were waiting to come back here is I made this little sign. It's important. Uh, connect water and wait 20 minutes to allow a humidifier to fill before turning on power. That is to make sure that when you first bring the system on, you don't start heating anything up until the water is completely full. Depending on the pressure from your house water, uh, it may take a little bit. It is a small line, but as long as you Give it a few minutes, that's with the power off. It'll naturally push itself in and fill itself up. This will turn on and off as you've just heard. Uh, again, to accommodate the uh, set point temperature. There is both a filter in here, and then all you need to do is take a screwdriver, for example, comes off real easy. Turn that and turn that. And as you can see we have another filter inside here too. These are common filters uh, of a common size that you, you can just about get anywhere, Home Depot or any place that would have um, heating and cooling type of filters. very efficient system for uh, weathering testing. And this completes this demonstration.